Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Oh, welcome to Drinking Bros. We are doing an emergency episode. Emergency, emergency episode. Um, I've got some devastating news, D'Anthony, that I've learned of. Um, we, it, it needs to be discussed. Yeah. Is it about like politics <laughs> or something? Is it about your family? No, no, it's about Taco Bell. Oh, uh, those are moving more important items than your family. Yeah. From the ma- yes, dude, it's more important than family, friends. No um, human being on this planet has done more for me than the than than Taco Bell has. Like, it's not even close. <laughs> As a matter of fact, almost everyone I've ever known has fucked me over in some way or another. Taco Bell has never fucked me over until now, ever, ever, and and that's why this is so surprising. So we're doing an episode. Uh, To the CEO of Taco Bell, we are pleading with him to please, please um, stop removing items from the menu. We're going to start off with numero uno here uh, that they're rumored to axe. And that's the quesaritos, Dan. Uh, I'm actually a fan of those quesaritos. Same. I'm a big fan of the quesaritos, and I don't understand it. To me, the quesaritos are also new, right? Um, you haven't given those enough time to live in the world. It's like, uh, it's like killing your child after like eight months old. Yes, he's going to be an asshole, and you're not going to be amped about your child up until that point. But once they hit a year and they can walk and start doing things, then they're fine. Otherwise, everybody would kill their children. This, in my opinion, is, is killing, killing a child here at Taco Bell. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how long uh, Casey Anthony waited, but I think it was at least over a year, right? <laughs> I don't know how old. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she was two. Kaylee Anthony okay. was two. <laughs> okay. So if you're going on the Casey Anthony scale of that was when bad. To, that was bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you're going on the Casey Anthony scale, you should definitely um, leave this for another year. The Caseritos. Um, now the next one. I'm okay with this. I understand this. I wasn't in the board meeting, but I definitely understand the thinking behind this. The all potato items. Um, there has been a, a, a trend over the last couple of years where they started adding potatoes to tacos and burritos. Yeah, I don't know if it was like some kind of push to make things more authentic or whatever the fuck, like street tacos in, in Austin or, or South Texas or in actual Mexico or anything, but I'm not a fan right. of that. Like you, no. you, there's no way to get a consistently cooked cubed potato from a fast food place. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's a good idea in principle, but the execution, you have to know as an organization, the execution of that is just going to be poor. I agree. And um, they, they, this was a miss for them. And so I think this is how politics should work. You, you've got to give a little, you got to hear the other side, and then you've, you, you've got to give, you know? Um, and I'll, I'll give you this one, Taco Bell. You can take that one off the menu, all the potato items. It wasn't once where I was like, ah, shit, I'd love to add some potatoes to my Mexican food. You know? Yeah. Well, there's other ones on here that are weird, though. There is, but uh, the next one up is the loaded grillers. Um, oh, not, here's when I start to get heated. <laughs> um, I enjoyed the loaded grillers. They're on the dollar Big menu, right? Of the loaded grillers. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're on the dollar menu. And uh, my God, man, um, the loaded grillers were great. Not really sure what happened here. There is no potatoes in the loaded grillers. So what are we doing? What are we doing here? Um, I just, I don't understand the thinking. We weren't invited to the, the board meeting, by the way. I really want to stress that to the audience. We weren't invited. For to Taco, Taco Bell? Bell? No, not at all. They didn't even reach out at all. It's PepsiCo that owns them. Uh, hey, do you guys want beers? Yeah. Everybody? Yeah. What do you, what we're, do you, we're, we're drinking hard today. I got, you, a, I got a tangerine uh, white claw here. Okay. What do you got, Dan? Uh, I'm drinking coffee right now, but I'm going to get some, uh, some, some sours and ciders and uh, what, what do you want? A sour? I don't, oh, they yeah. don't, the sour's out. What do you want? What else do you want? Cider. Cider. There we go. Where are you, are you ordering beer online right now? Uh, no, Danny is over at uh, Outpost. Oh, great. And so actually, bring some shit. If you're if you're if you're watching the video show right now and you're like, yo, what the fuck is going on with Ross and Dan? Ross is in a bandana with sunglasses. Dan is in sunglasses getting high 
and ordering beer from women that are around the studio. We've had it with the quarantine and in particular this Taco Bell bullshit. So we thought we would go all in today um because there's there's almost no reason to live anymore if this if this uh bill passes and i want to say it probably is a bill right dan um no no they're a company ah this is not okay. taco bell doesn't represent the united states government in any way shape or form so far as i know i think i'm the one that's should. high why are you saying this i think they should I, I, look i just i i picture taco bell to be important like that where it's it's a, you know, people are voting on a bill. People are ru rushing around uh, trying to get signatures of different items. And then it goes up to the boss and then they make a, a decision. You're telling me it is the opposite of that. And uh, yeah, I think so. Maybe, maybe that's why there's uh, some failure here in the Taco Bell organization. Uh, next up, Dan, the triple layer nacho. Go fuck yourself, Taco Bell. Yeah, that's another one, man. It's another one I, I don't understand. It. Like, why, why would they get rid of that? Doesn't make any sense. It uh, doesn't make any sense. I, I, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not here for it. I'm not going to support this. And matter of fact, uh, I might stock up, Dan. I might go there tonight and order 50 of these and then just keep them. Uh, how long do you think these would stay, stay good for if I just um, ordered uh, 50 triple layer nachos? I don't know. Seven, eight weeks, probably. <laughs> Come on, man. It's fucking Taco Bell. <laughs> true you ever true. seen that video where somebody takes uh, uh a quarter pounder with cheese from mcdonald's and sets it out on the street and does a time-lapse video of a year no and it pretty much maintains its shape <laughs> like you can tell that it starts to rot over time a little bit but it takes a while for there to be any noticeable fucking marks or anything on that thing so i feel Oof. like with the amount of preservatives and sodium in that you could probably get a month or two out of it yeah I'm, uh, by the way, I'm in my empty house trying to, to build and, and they're painting the walls and all this bullshit today. So there's a bunch of construction people here. So I've only been faced with these fast food, it f food items the last three days. Taco Bell, Whataburger, and uh, uh, Burger King. And McD uh, McDonald's is around here. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. Burger King and McDonald's are both better than Whataburger. Yeah, Whataburger is garbage. I don't give a fuck about you Texans and your fucking shitty nope. palate like i'm from texas i knew what a cheeseburger is why would a texan know what a cheeseburger is get fucked losers yeah it doesn't make any sense man i had the i've had everything on there there i've tried to give it a go right we're, we're we're texans now i tried to give it a go it's fucking garbage i went to taco bell last night no lie yeah. it was right next door uh next up on this list is the spicy tostada again again here's where i'm being uh diplomatic on this i will give you that one back um, I don't really give a shit about the spicy tostada. Yeah, I didn't even know that was a thing, to be honest. No. So it, it, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, it, is, uh, it was a Mexican pizza they used to have there back in the day. That was delicious. They still One have the, the greatest... Mexican pizza, but they changed the red sauce somehow. Correct. I don't know Correct. what they did to it, but it tastes different now, and it's ruined my fucking life. Yes, same, same here, and, uh, but it's the same shape and pattern and all that stuff, so I'm imagining they just swapped out the toppings on top, but I'm willing to give you this one back, uh, Taco Bell. You can have the spicy tostada back. Uh, now, this one is causing an uproar on the internet. People are losing all of the shit inside their body. Uh, it, it looks like the streets of San Francisco, there is feces and urine everywhere in america right now because they want to take the seven layer burrito that's off the menu that's one of the ogs like yep. literally it's been around forever and it's also uh delicious it's also super cheap for the amount of food you get which is the case with most taco bell stuff but this one is extreme it's like a pound this, pound of yeah. food for like fucking 12 cents or some shit this will fill up a family of four on its own just this one seven layer burrito and I think this is more of an economic thing for the United States versus um, what your palate is like. Um, families need this. Cities are shutting down. People are going to go back out of work again. If this isn't on the menu, congratulations. You just let a family go starving for the rest of the week. Yeah, man. Honestly, uh, I've been foraging for my own food lately. Have you really? Uh, yeah. So instead of going to a grocery store and buying stuff, I just kind of walk around the city and find people outside of grocery stores who've already bought stuff, and I take their fucking stuff. Because, <laughs> ah, you know, gotcha, gotcha. they can't stop me, bitch. Everybody's yeah, wearing they masks. <laughs> they can't even identify me at this point. <laughs> are you asking, or are you just taking? Uh, I, I don't ask, but I do tell them that I'm taking it. I'm not a dick. 
Okay. I'm like, hey, okay. excuse me, sir. I'm taking all this. Yeah. Thanks. And yeah. it's like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> and by then I'm gone. So, eh, nothing they can do about it. Um, last on this list here is the beefy Frito burrito. Oh, again, Taco Bell. Um, please do not do this. I love this is one that actually I'll, I'll, I'll bring back some common ground with Texas right quick because the Frito pie is amazing. If you've never had one in your life, it's like fucking. Oh, yeah. It's like chili cheese meat with fucking Fritos in it. Why would that not be good? It's fucking delicious, bitch. And this, ha- uh, this has uh, some rice in it as well. There's a lot of texture and shit. It tastes really good. Uh, really good. I don't get it, man. It's actually a either. lot like the beefy Fritos burrito is a lot like a large size of the quesaritos. You know what I mean? Like it has the same kind of texture and structure as that. I'm super upset about this one. Yeah. We may yeah, need to start some kind of write-in campaign. You know, I've, I've called, um, <clears throat> I made some calls up to uh, some Antifa members up in Portland if they're going to get <laughs> behind this. Um, because I think this is probably a job for them. Um, let's face it. They're avid Taco Bell eaters. One, because they don't have any money. Right. Uh, two, um, Taco Bell is everywhere and they've got to stay fed in order to break shit for black lives matter um so a lot of them are going to taco bell and uh i mean look yeah, you can't you, know, you can't start marxism in a country without destroying all the fucking small privately owned businesses first everybody knows that yeah, everyone knows that so this is a, a plea to you antifa members um take your spike bats over to taco bell and and stay away from uh chaz and, and whatever the fuck else you're doing um because this is more important right now. I'm not sure what's going on in Portland, Dan, right now. But uh, the videos I've seen are crazy, dude. Can you explain any of that shit? Um, you mean like the Jump Out Boys? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they're like fucking SWAT and operators are cruising around in fucking minivans, jumping out, snatching people up, and taking them to fucking jail. Right? Is that what the, is that is that a, a military term? The, the jump, jump out boys. boys. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. So is I mean, really? if you think about it from a kinetic operation standpoint, um, what would you rather do? And this has been a debate since the very beginning of the global war on terror. Actually, before that, into the in the late uh, '90s. But uh, would you rather start some ground war of attrition, even if you are uh, superior when it comes to technology and tactics and shit, or would you rather send in a very precise unit? to snatch and grab key people and get them out of the fucking way and create disorder amongst the ranks because that's... I don't know if the government did any of that for Occupy Wall Street, but as soon as their fucking leadership started bouncing around and, and being weird and not, not being present or going off onto weird tangents and shit, that, or, uh-huh. that, that movement collapsed immediately. So if you're, if you're trying to stop an organization... And look, if you're a black person or an activist... Uh, that believes in Black Lives Matter is not the organization, but the movement. Um, you should enjoy this because what they're doing is removing those key assholes that are instigators that are starting shit and fucking up your peaceful protests. You should not be against this in any fucking way. Like what I've seen, the video I saw last night is some girl, uh, some dude's getting arrested by the jump out boys. They're riding around in a fucking minivan, two doors yep. open up and they fucking, they're on this guy like nothing. And, uh, They've got him in the car before anybody can do anything. But the girl's like, tell us your name. We'll bail you out. We're there for you, friend. Like, you don't even fucking <laughs> yeah. know this guy. What if he's a fucking rapist, you stupid bitch? Like, you're so fucking anti-cop. And by the way, she was like a 22-year-old white woman, of course, who's faced course. no discrimination in her goddamn life ever. Uh, she doesn't know who this guy is. It could be a fucking... He could have, like, been, been one of the people shooting guns in a crowd and shit. He could have be a rapist. It could be anything, right? So... Uh, how crazy do you have to be? Like, how crazy anti-cop do you have to be for your first instinct when you see anyone get arrested is like, oh, they shouldn't be doing that. All right, fine. Fuck it. Let's just go to Somalia if you want to do that, motherfucker. Look, if you live in a society without police, you better be goddamn strong. <laughs> you know what I mean? And all these little skinny white bitches, these fucking t- Antifa turds that are, that are running around fucking, I punch Nazis in the face. Dude, if the police go away, you're dead tomorrow, motherfucker. I mean, it's, you're not going to last one goddamn day. I will fucking murder your entire family and take all your possessions as my own because that's what's got to happen, right? It's the fucking Thunderdome, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> For real, though, that's what's going to happen. Like, in the absence of these authority figures, all these little fucking whining cunts go away. You get murdered, motherfucker. I mean, 
you better slow the fuck down and think about what you're yeah. doing right now. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and the jump out boys are there, brother. They're coming for your whole family. Oh, yeah, the jump out boys, brother. Yeah, cup of coffee. We should, cup of coffee. We should probably make a jump out boys fucking t-shirt. Oh, uh, it'd be the best. All black and then just white letters, the jump out boys. So that yeah. way everybody asks. Where they're like, yeah. hey, man, what's the jump out boys? Well, you're about to find out, dude. A minivan yeah. rolls up. You think it's a mom of three kids taking her, her, her tykes to soccer. Yeah, nope. all of a sudden you're getting flex cuffed by three operators. Zip, zip, zip. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> fucking hog tied in the back of a van. I should have kept my fucking mouth shut, probably. <laughs> shit. Tell me your name. I'll come get you. Oh, yeah. Brian. I mean, it was so stupid. And, and all the people in Portland are like, oh, my God, it's surreal to see people in camouflage in the city snatching people off the street. Motherfucker, shut up. <laughs> You've never, I, I just want, uh, this is why I think that Starship Troopers got it right. You have to serve, not necessarily in the military, but in some kind of civil capacity where you leave this country and go somewhere else for your country, on behalf of your country, and see what it's like out there before you fucking start whining about conditions in Portland, goddamn Oregon, dude. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you fucking kidding me? That's your big beef? I mean, it rains a lot, but fuck. A lot of good, yeah. a lot of good apples there, I'll tell you that. Uh, and, and what I don't understand is um, what did you think was eventually going to happen? That you could just own the city and run the city uh, by yourself yeah. and uh, people are going <laughs> to let you govern and just, you know, take your sticks and bats and run through people's yards and all that shit. Like, no, eventually it's going to end. And imagine if fucking Trump wasn't in there. It was like Holy being shit. preyed upon. <laughs> God, <laughs> shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> The jump out boys, we support you, dude. Hopefully, they're listening to the show today. Yeah, I love that. Uh, but but again, from a str- it's not about intimidation or anything. Like that from a strategic standpoint, if you send a whole shitload of cops into a crowd, there's going to mm-hmm. be some kind of confrontation probably, and nobody yeah. nobody wants it. The protesters don't want it. And the police sure as shit don't want it because they don't want to look any worse than their fucking uh, than the public or than the government's already trying to make them look. So, like, use cameras to identify people who are causing shit. Collect that uh-huh. evidence, and then you fucking find them and go snatch them off the street, right? Yep. It's yep. It's just that goddamn simple. It's it hashtag was, the jump out boys. It was like being preyed upon. I was terrified. It seemed like it was out of a horror sci-fi, like a Philip K. Dick novel. <laughs> Is that what she said? That's what the one of the dudes that got arrested said. He's a twenty-nine year old a philip k dick novel he said i didn't know if they were police or 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 right-wing extremists or something like oh those are the only two options probably yeah right (laughs) it's got to be one of those two (laughs) fucking idiot god damn it dude hopefully these people aren't out there fucking yeah by the way tell uh tell ibby to put the fucking clip of this right now in the in the video show mark that that time code and put the yeah, put the clip of uh, Homeboy getting uh, roped up off the streets here. From last night, the Post says that federal officers rushed up and arrested someone for no reason. That person is seen in the video then being taken into an unmarked van. Protesters claim they're being kidnapped. Now, Senator Jeff Merkley shared the video as well today on Twitter, saying authoritarian governments, not democratic republics, send unmarked authorities after protesters. These Trump bar tactics designed to eliminate any accountability are absolutely unacceptable in America and must end. It reminds me of when uh, Will Ferrell and them were in uh, old school picking up pledges in the van. You know, mm-hmm. just grabbing people, <clears throat> grabbing blue off the street and shit like that. Like, yeah, he grabbed awesome. that one dude and fucked his groceries up, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I would be there in that parking lot to collect those groceries and take yep. them back to my home and provide for my family. <laughs> <laughs> like AOC said. That's, a, that's the only crime in New York right now is people trying to provide for their families. Everybody knows that. That's it. Yeah, it's not murder at all. It's just uh, people trying to get uh, um, flautas for yeah, their uh, got to get that bread. In-laws. Well, flautas. Yeah, got to get that bread, hombre. Are, are flautas, uh, is that wheat or corn? I don't know. You got you to you clap them. You got to clap them. No, I, I know? know how to make it, but is it like corn or flour? Or is it, I don't know with that. Cause I bur- believe it's flour. Burritos are flour. Tortillas are corn, right? I know that. Anybody you, out you there? Know, no, but here, here's the deal. Um, the fact that we have to ask, Dan, is because Taco Bell is taking shit off the menu, and usually this is pre-made for us, and, and we don't have to make these decisions or think about it in real life. Taco Bell has forced us now into this. Yep. Um, I want to talk about RBG. RBG, Hail Mary, run quick seas. She's back in the hospital. 
Dan, she's got cancer. Yeah, now? in her Again? uh, in her ass or something. I don't know what it is. Whoa, nope, that's whoa, not right. Whoa, whoa. Nope, nope. That's nope. only dudes that do that. That's um. Yep. It, let's see what kind of cancer it is. Do-do-do-do. Treatment of recurrence. Fact check her anal cancer. I don't think that's <clears throat> probably it. Why did um, so when CNN describes her, it says the liberal justice eighty seven said she remains fully able to continue in her post. Why? Why the liberal justice? Like why? Why include you know, that? Why? What's the point yeah. of including that? You fucking cunts. Um, let's see. It doesn't make any sense. What? I think. I think because oh, it's pancreatic cancer. Find... That's really common oh, in older people. Pancreatic yeah. cancer. Yeah, that's not a good is, one either. Is... No, that's that's usually like, hey man, you got about three months. Yeah, not that there's any good cancer, but no, I don't. Uh, I don't want you... her to die. By the way, I don't want anyone other than pedophiles outright to die. Same. Um, and look, she's 88 years old. Um, I think if she can hold on past the election, they should build a fucking statue of her. Yeah. Because uh, Jesus Christ, she's been in and out of the hospital 80 times in the last two years. So yeah. um, could you imagine the meltdown, Dan, if she fucking died? Because this is going to air on Sunday night. Yeah. Could you imagine if she dies over the weekend next week, right before this election? What would happen in this case? Because this happened with uh, Scalia and Obama when, when Justice Scalia died. Yeah, and Obama he, had about four months left. He tried to. Uh, well, I don't know when that was. When did Merrick Garland get uh, nominated? When was the actual nomination? I want to say it was somewhere in June or July. Scalia and, died and in February. Was, yeah, I, so I want to say it was June or July, and then the election was coming up in November, obviously. And uh, Cocaine Mitch McConnell was just like, "Hey, man, we're going to push this because it, it's." It's typically the next sitting president. And Obama didn't have a problem with it because everybody thought Hillary was getting in. So they were like, well, fuck it. Yeah. Um, and that, didn't, that didn't go so well. But uh, if she died now, my God, man, there would be people in the streets burning shit. So he nominated Merrick Garland on March 16th? Well, yeah. And it still didn't go through. Wow. So S- Trump still, has no still- chance of getting somebody in then. Uh, correct. And, and, and that's my point on this. But this would certainly be a rallying cry that uh, both sides need right now, to be frank about it. Like, yeah. hey, man, who's going to be? Because if, if Biden gets in there and, they, and RBG goes down and he puts a, a, a liberal in there, I believe that puts them up one, right? Mm. Isn't it 5-4 right now? Uh, it's 5-4 um, conservative. Right. So this would so, put... Uh, it would put them up 5-4, and that's a big one, man. That's a big deal. Um, no, I don't think so. It's 5-4 conservatives, so if a liberal dies, they have to replace them with a liberal. Otherwise, it's going to be 6-3 in favor of conservatives. Oh, oh, correct, correct. Um, so man, that's, like, that's, super dangerous, and that's going to be all Joe yeah. Biden talks about. If, if RBG dies, that's all he'll talk about for the rest of the year. It'll be nothing else because the Dow Jones is back up to 27,000. Um, right. All the job reports we've gotten recently are fucking great. So I mean, it's, if the economy even gets back to 80% of what it was considering what's happened, fucking Trump is going to destroy this dude. Unless by some miracle fucking Biden comes through in the debates, but I just don't understand how it's possible. Like he's clearly got fucking dementia. So I don't know how that, that's even possible for him to do that. If he's able to hold it together for two hours on stage for, for those three nights, uh, it'll be a Christmas miracle. Um, but yeah, and you know I, I what Trump's she... going to do. He's going to ask him like complicated questions about his past. That's all I would do for that whole debate is like, do you remember when you said this? What about when you said this, Joe? And, and then Joe right. was like, he can go off a script kind of, but if he has to reach back into his fucking memory, he's done son. And it's going to be brutal. Tell it's going to be worse, uh, than Nixon sweating on camera. And what was it? The 59 debates or some shit. When was it? Yeah, I was wasn't. 60, I wasn't. Sixty four. Wasn't alive then. He ran for like ten years. I feel like. Yeah. But, um. Wasn't alive. But you can shed some light on this, Dan. They have intense. Um. I, I don't want to say. Oh, I was in sixty a- auditions, but uh, they ha- they have they have intense like uh, uh, read throughs with other actors that are playing who you're going to debate against. Do you think he's got Alec Baldwin in there pretending to be Trump? That'd be fucking funny as shit, to be honest. (laughs) That would be super funny because Alec Baldwin is a super hardcore liberal and he takes politics seriously, but it would be hard as an actor not to get into it a little bit. You know what I mean? That would be really fucking funny. I would actually pay to see that. I would pay. I would rather see that debate than the fucking real one that's going to happen. Uh, that would be great. It, it's almost like an understudy. They cast these understudies yeah. to, uh, to come in and, and read and play the part of the other person. 
Um, I got to see a little bit of that behind the camera with, uh, I watched that Hillary doc on Hulu, um, which was a love letter to her, but there was footage of that and they had a guy playing Trump um, and he was imitating his mannerisms and everything else and his voice. Huge, mm. huge. <laughs> um, so that would be hilarious if it was Alec Baldwin. Um, but yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think, I think if Trump goes in and just starts hammering Biden with questions from his past, mm. it's over at that point. That's but, what I would so, have him doing. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be great TV. Um, the, the VP candidates are starting to narrow, D'Anthony. Yeah. Um, this Tammy Duckworth is really uh, coming out of the, the woodwork here. Yeah. I, I mean, she's been around for a long time now. Uh, I remember when she first got elected. Um, I thought it was good for the country when her and Tulsi Gabbard and some of these other GWAT vets made their way into liberal politics because I think they bring a perspective that isn't so, uh, uh, I don't know, stovepiped or isolated or siloed. You know what I mean? Like they've had real wor world experience in the military, which is a much different beast uh, from working in corporate America, obviously, right? Like you face, right. uh, I think it gives you a lot of perspective uh, on things like harsh language. I, I, would, I would expect that neither of those two women care so much about PC culture. Like, I, I doubt that they would be too into it, frankly. Um, so despite their politics, they usually uh, uh, do pretty well with that kind of shit. And also, what I haven't, I, I haven't followed her closely, but I can't remember uh, either one of those two women Gabbard or Duckworth ever really getting deep into identity politics. You know what I mean? Right. Um, like they're like, of course they're fucking pro marriage equality and shit like that, but they're, they're not like, you don't see them out there on the stump. Uh, although they are both women of color and they're also, uh, natives essentially. Right. Uh, so, yeah. so it's like, they've got a bigger gripe than a lot of other groups might have. Um, and uh, you don't see them really engaging in that kind of bullshit. So I like both of those people. I, I think she would make a pretty good choice, to be honest. You know, a lot of people, drinking bro wise, have, have reached out and said, hey, man, would you ever have Tulsi Gabbard on the show? Absolutely. So if anybody's mm -hmm. got an in to her, uh, we would be more than happy to have her on the show. I know she did Rogan, and we are not one of those gotcha shows. Um, we read all your messages, and you guys have asked for Joe Jorgensen to be on and uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Um, both Dan and I are pretty thoughtful guys, minus today. I mean, obviously we're <laughs> drinking White Claw on a Friday night. And uh, uh, I want to point out that this is Friday in case RBG dies over the weekend. And you're like, why the fuck are you guys late to that story? Um, well, it's because we're drinking on a Friday. We thought we'd do a, a real weird fucking show for your Monday drive. Uh, Dan's smoking weed and all mm -hmm. that shit. But we, we read every message. We would be happy to sit down with Tulsi Gabbard and, and uh, Joe Jorgensen and Tammy Duckworth, man. We're not a gotcha show. We'll, we will have a genuine, thoughtful conversation, and, um, you know, we welcome it. So don't think just because, you know, I lean one way or the other in politics that we, we're not open to hearing everyone else. Uh, I think that's shitty as human beings, and I, I don't like when, when others mm -hmm. shun other guests for that reason. Like, uh, to be frank, man, this is totally dead serious. If AOC reached out and said, hey, guys, I would like to have a healthy debate on what I believe in versus what you guys believe in, we would treat her with respect and we would invite her on the show for real. Yeah. I, I've actually, um, I was watching this documentary that someone did on Jordan Peterson. Um, I don't know when it, uh, when it came out, but it, it, I think it's on Netflix and it's really interesting. Like it gives a lot more perspective on who he is as a person. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was just thinking it would be in very interesting to get him on stage in a town hall style debate, if you want to call it a debate with someone that is actively engaged in PC culture, but has a reasonable take on it. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I couldn't think of anybody who is like a, a very strong voice on that side for PC culture. You know what I mean? Like, I can't think of anybody yeah. that's reasonable that doesn't just say crazy bullshit all the time. Like, cause his premise is, uh, he got in trouble. For those of you who don't know, if you haven't seen him on Rogan or whatever, read any of his books or followed his story, he's a um, <clears throat> professor, uh, psychologist at uh, the at, uh, University of Toronto. I believe he was uh, at Harvard before that. Mm -hmm. And he discusses all sorts of stuff. Like, you know, so don't, don't think that I'm pigeonholing him here. But he, he 
Canada passed these laws that made it a hate crime to misgender people at some point or something like that happened. And he was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. And P- P- everyone on, on the left side of that argument tried to make the point that, well, you're just being a dick. You're not calling them that just because you don't want to. He's like, no, I'm not doing it because the government is telling me I have to. Like, the government cannot tell me what to say. And when you let that kind of stuff be put into law, and every time he gets into a debate with, debate with one of these people, it's like uh, they come back at him like, well, what are you saying, that trans activists are somehow fucking totalitarian? Is that what you're saying? It's like, no, I'm saying that the ideology behind telling me what I can and can't say coming from an authoritative government is how we get to that thing. It's not about the trans activists. It's about fucking take, turning their emotional pain and turning it into law. You cannot do that, ever. Uh, yeah. So I think, it's, uh, I, I think it's impossible to find somebody on that side of the argument that would be re- have a reasonable and thoughtful discussion with him. But yeah, I can, you if know, you can think of anybody, I would love to hear it. Yeah, and I, I can tell you this from the right, and I know I always bring him up a lot, but Dan Crenshaw is always open to listen to people and throw <laughs> out ideas to try to meet people in the middle. Yeah. I know a lot of people were pissed off about the, some of the things he said about 2A and, and uh, the red flag laws, but um, uh, he's at least willing to have those conversations in a, in a thoughtful manner. A- again, you might not agree with people's politics or, or, or mm. everything that comes out of their mouth, but you have to be willing to have an open and honest conversation yeah. well, that's, with the other side that's or, the problem, or all yeah. of this is going to continue on yeah. forever. Um, well, therefore, I, I, you know, if any of these people came on, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't shit on them. I would no. listen and disagree, but um, it would be a thoughtful conversation. Yeah, but you can't, uh, and, and that was Peterson's point, you can't disagree when somebody turns it into law. Like you can't make a law that bans disagreeing with somebody else. And his, his, the final thesis the thing that brings it all together is something that I say all the time and that, that he said in, uh, in this particular conversation that I was uh, talking about. If we can't fight uh, with our words, like if we can't debate things with our words and come to some kind of resolution, whatever it happens to be, then we're going to have to fight with our fists, right? And we should, yeah. active, we should be actively trying to avoid physical violence if we can. Like that should be a goal of ours in any kind of, whether it's in a, interpersonal relationship or geopolitical relationship either way we should be trying to avoid that shit and if you start saying if you start start telling me what words i can and can't say then we can no longer be honest with each other because we're afraid to be honest with each other and the cancel culture makes us afraid to be honest with each other um and i think it's we're we're seeing the fruits of that now because people and very like high level positions are saying some really, really dumb shit because they've never been challenged on it. You know what I mean? And we can't, yeah. we can't have a, a, a thoughtful and fact-based debate on race and economics or any subject. If everybody at the table is not going to be honest about what the fuck's going on and realize what reality is, because if your premise is, well, you just can't fucking call me, sir, if I'm a ma'am or whatever the fuck, if that's your premise, then anything, it, maybe you're right about that, right? But the second and third order effects of making a rule like that may affect something else that had nothing to do with what you originally intended. That's why liberty is so important. Like, you can't fucking, you can't start uh, pulling down branches off the tree of liberty like that. It's ma'am. It's ma'am. That's all I, uh, that's all I thought when you said that, by the way. Yeah, that's all anybody um. thinks when you say that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I don't I don't know if there's going to be anybody who's going to bridge that gap to be honest with you, but uh if there is, it's going to be Kanye who is now qualified for the Oklahoma ballot. So he's starting to make some some state ballots, Dan. Um that was a myth the other day. He is he's definitely not dropping out of uh, his presidential run. So maybe that's the guy who bridges the gap, you know? Yeah, I bet it's going to be him, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, we got some sponsors who pay for this whole fucking shit wagon to be on the air. Uh, first and foremost, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. If you are a member of the military, if you're a first responder, uh, you work for the government or a teacher, they are now giving you 30% off everything in the entire store. Um, to my knowledge, no other company has ever done anything like this. Uh, I, I'm not sure how long this is going to last for, but I know a lot of the schools are being shut down. Mm-hmm. Some are being moved to online, and, I, and I'm imagining it's, it's to, uh, to help the teachers. Um, and uh, uh, 
they're fucking awesome. They're just a great company, man. And, and it's the best mattresses on the planet. Mm. I'm waiting for mine to come as I sit uh, in, a, in an empty house here in Austin, Texas. And last night I had a terrible night's sleep without one, for Christ's sakes. Um, it was awful. Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. As always, they got a 36 month pay as you go program. No interest on that. And all of those deals are applicable um, with the pay as you go program at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. And uh, for the rest of you dum dums uh, like myself, regular civilians, uh, they got 25% off everything. And uh, uh, you get two free pillows with a mattress, which is still a banger of a deal. Uh, next up, we got GetRoman.com forward slash drinking bros. D'Anthony, let's I'm, get our boners on. Yeah, I'm on it right now. Yeah, you are. Goddamn not, right not, you are. Not kidding. That's, uh, what are you looking that's at? What... <laughs> I get real aggressive. Is a- so Is Alex staring at your boner, dude? No, he's just staring at my face, which is worse. I'd rather him stare at my dick. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you should put a, a boner law in effect. Because a lot of actors do that on set. No eye contact. Maybe you should just have a dick contact rule. Well, I, it doesn't help that I've uh, put these clear window panes in the front of all my pants. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I guess I'm asking for it. I don't know. But yeah. I, don't, I don't like the victim blame either. So, No, of course not. It's like an orangutan banging up against the glass at your local zoo. Yeah, it looks um, like a, it's just not great. Honestly, it's all, it's all meat and hair pressed against the fucking. Nobody wants to see that shit. And I wear uh, Merkin too because I don't like. I keep my pubes trim, but during the day I like to feel a little girth. If I'm gonna fuck, I'm gonna take it off. But I wear obviously I wear a pubic wig during the day to soak up all that moisture. And yeah, you, you sh- have to shake it out at the end of the day and fucking put it back on in the morning. I think that's what that Taylor Swift song was about. Shake, shake it, it off. off. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, about, yeah. She, she she wears a Merkin as well. Yep. Um, if you go to her house, it's, it's hanging above uh, uh, her shower rod. Um, mm-hmm. She lets it dry out there at night and then tapes it back on in the morning. That's how that works. Uh, but if you need a boner out there and your dick doesn't work, um, go to GetRoman.com forward slash drinking bros today. They will send you a discreet package in the mail within 48 hours. Uh, free shipping and free doctor visits. You don't have to go in anywhere. There's a reason why they've overtaken Viagra on the markets. Uh, and they're just fun recreationally. If you want to pop one in and get your boner on, dude, for the weekend, go to GetRoman.com forward slash drinking bros today. Uh, next up, we got DukeCannon.com. It's been a while, Dan. Yeah. Uh, fuck, I love them, dude. You know they're in every store like there is? Um, Probably not Taco Bell, though. I mean, Taco Bell's probably gotten rid of them because they get rid of all the good things. Goddamn right they do. Fuck there was you, a nice Taco Duke Bell. Cannon burrito that uh, is also being removed from the menu there. People um, keep no, asking me about Duke Cannon all the time. Yeah. And I don't every, know. Every, I, all the time. Yeah. I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't realize they were in so many stores because that's the, the message I usually get is like a picture. Like somebody DMs me on Instagram like, hey, you're, you guys are sponsored by them, right? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. They're, they're in all the stores. I'm like, yeah, I know, dude. They've been around for it's, a minute now. It's like the huge. best soap that exists. Yeah, it's, it is literally the best soap that exists. You get a deal, so you don't have to go in, in stores. You get a deal if you go to DukeCannon.com online. Um, with the promo code Drinking Bros, you get 15% off of everything. Uh, they've got four cents. The naval supremacy is yours, um, and the, uh, yep. the old glory is, is, is my fave, obviously. But um, you can get a four-pack for 30 bucks. Um, and, and that's the route you want to go with that. You get uh, 15% off and free shipping. That's what I would Here's do the, the first time because you don't know which one you're going to like, frankly. No. And it's going to be cheaper if you buy it online like this and in the store. So you can just get the 30, what is it, 32 bucks or some shit? Yeah. For yeah. the, the, the four-pack? Yeah, it's like it's, it's cheap as shit. So just get all of them, use all of them, and then start. You could get a subscription to the one you like after yeah. that. Um, and the beauty of it is, is like, dude, you get a four pack. They're so fucking huge. They will last forever. Yeah. Um, this was a sponsor that you guys actually asked us to reach out and get them on the show. And we did because um, we love them just as much as you do. I, I just thought they were truthfully too big for us, but uh, they're not. And they're here. Go to DukeCannon.com. Promo code Drinking Bros. 15% off. D'Anthony. Yeah. Um, we're, uh, we're getting ready to go to Los Angeles. Getting ready to uh, to shoot some shows in L.A. for a week. Doesn't Jamil Hill live out there? I believe she does. How's she doing these days, Dan? Well, as I don't know if if, if you have read it, uh, but Kareem Abdul Jabbar, who uh, I don't know if you noticed, but Muslim. Yep, because yep. of the name, right? Because uh, yeah. his name is Lou Alcindor before, <laughs> and now it's Kareem Abdul Jabbar because he converted to Islam. He wrote. Uh, an op-ed about how there's been very little outrage over the wave of anti-Semitism over the last couple of months, particularly amongst athletes. Um, Ice Cube kind of kicked it off 
but he's been doing that for fucking 25 years now. But uh, Deshaun Jackson and, you know, the latest dum-dum, um, it's, uh, his, his, he wrote a very thoughtful piece. Like, where is the, like, if we're about justice, where is the justice for everybody else? That's our mantra all the time. So Jamil Hill said that we're, this is a quote from her. Mm-hmm. We're in this moment, this very thoughtful and critical moment where we're having conversations about race. And because you have black people who are at the center of these controversies, people worry about that. Like, okay, if I come out and criticize Nick Cannon, that's going to be perceived as if I'm uh, against black people uh, who in this moment are fighting for something really important. And then she went on to say, I think that's why you have seen a little less outrage than maybe you would have seen and blah, blah, blah. Um, And like, you're not essentially what she's saying is you're not going to see a whole lot of white people saying anti-black shit in this moment because of that, right? Um, right. Yeah, you fucking nailed it, dum dum. You you just described the fucking PC culture and why it is so goddamn harmful to our country. You fucking dumb bitch. I hate her so much. Like honestly, I've always hated Jamil Hill. She she's just like she's like your fucking uh, girlfriend's uh, weird ass nosy fucking troublemaking friend. That's like Mm -hmm. your girlfriend asks you a a, a innocuous question and you give her an answer and she's like, oh, that doesn't sound right. Oh, let's see. I can make some fucking waves here. That's that's what Jamil Hill Hill is to me. She's not a journalist. She's just some fuck face. That's always trying to start trouble. Yeah. And if you don't know who she is, she used to host the 6 p.m. Sports Center um, and it was the the worst sports center in the history of of espn in my opinion both of those hosts were, were goddamn awful and uh they ended up firing her for constantly injecting her political beliefs yeah. uh, into the show on air and that, that into- layup looked really racist oh yeah yeah like what the God fuck you're a sports commentator dummy what are you talking she about did one more kaepernick story man i was gonna fucking hang myself but um you and i uh, ironically, right after she got fired, ran into Sage Steele in Atlanta at the oh, Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah. And we got to chat with her, and I said, dude, I'm a huge Sage Steele fan. And I go, dude, thank God you took over that slot after she got fired. Um, because I was like, I just want to hear the sports, man. That's Sage Steele's I- uh, father was in the military, by the way. I believe he was a captain in the Army, if I'm not mistaken. Man, she is cool as fuck behind the scenes, by mm-hmm. the way. Um, yeah. she, I mean, we had drinks with her for fuck man an hour and a half i think i gotta um, be honest i don't remember a whole lot of that because ooh, i remember her take night. i remember her taking her heels off and then she was a, like super short i'm like oh i thought you were taller get out of here um <laughs> no she's she was super cool but i was really fucking high there was a point because we were sitting there watching uh the foo fighters right and it's yeah. a very small crowd and i i'm baked and i realized that i'd just been staring at the same fucking point for the last 12 hours but it was probably like 10 <laughs> seconds. That's how high I was. Everybody's been there. Don't fucking lie and say you haven't. Bunch of bitches. Yeah, I had a nice, thoughtful conversation with Sage Deal and then maybe, I don't know, six to eight drinks during it. But uh, she, she's a great person, and she yeah. said the same thing. She was like, look, if you're, if you're going to ESPN and you're watching sports, um, you're there for entertainment. Like, there is plenty of other outlets you can go to watch politics. Yeah, yeah. ESPN is not fucking one of them. And, um, and, and say, say steel is black, you know, she said that she was like, Hey man, I, this is what this, this show (laughs) should be. And, uh, you know, when it's appropriate or timely, or if if there is Mm -hmm. a story going on in a game, obviously then, yeah, of course you're going to talk about it, but Emil Hill was going ham every night on something political. And it was like, get her the fuck out of here. She's over at the Atlantic now, if I'm not mistaken. Is that, yeah, she's a, she's a staff writer at the Atlantic, which, uh, that I, I don't, if, if you guys didn't go out and read that explanation about why there's no rise in COVID deaths, by the way, we're fucking past that little window, and uh, still they haven't. They're still going down every single week. Like the window where we th- were supposed to have a fucking massive influx of deaths, it just didn't happen. Anyways, um, uh, wait, what were we talking about? Sage Steel. Yeah. Take another hit of that, that pipe real quick. No, I, really I didn't. go there. Should do that. Yeah. That's a, good, that's a good fucking plan. Yeah, she's... <laughs> The reason that she has that kind of fucking attitude is because she was a fucking military brat that traveled. I think she was born in Panama near the canal, like when that was going on. Actually, I think she was down there. She was born when my dad was down there, as a matter of fact. Uh, oh, really? In the Panama, Panama Canal, yeah. Um, and then she traveled to Europe and, you know, has been all over. So she's, pro- she's a black woman in America, which has its challenges. But she comes from a strong family. And, of course, she's a great person that's well-traveled and well-read. 
I mean, it's you, you see, she is the solution to that problem. It's it's not tokenism when you say, look, here's a black person that's doing very well in America. Unpack why. Figure out why, and then fucking let's make sure everybody can mimic that and do the same. You don't all have to do the exact same thing. But a strong family with a dad in the household are fucking key. Those are key things. Education and world experience, those things are key. She's got all of it. That's why she's so dope, yeah. and that's why Jamel yes. Hill is not. No, no. Uh, Sage, is, uh, Sage is rad, dude. We're here for it. Uh, a lot of prayers going up now, Dan, for RBG. I don't know if her situation has worsened, but uh, I, I feel like if we were in the same city, we would just do uh, kind of an, uh, an on-the-clock thing. You know how people put uh, hands on a hard body, like a car inside of a mall, yeah, and the yeah. last one <laughs> touching it gets the car? I feel like we should have gotten um, an RBG uh mannequin and then uh just did a show as long as we can go and as long as she's gonna last I, does she make it through the weekend we're um, recording this on a friday afternoon yeah that's a good question i don't know i'm looking on uh my bookie right now to see if they have anything so a lot of a lot of uh, uh listeners hit us up and they were like hey man is my uh doing um over unders on rbg and i'm like as, as sick as it sounds they they do it for a bunch of other celebrities so i'm not sure to be honest yeah with what you. uh you, you probably have to go section? into props, props probably, or special bets. Um, they do a lot of those. The uh, special. By the way, promo, oh, go ahead. Promo code Drinking Bros. Uh, we'll get you 150 percent mm-hmm. of your deposit back on mybookie.com. So uh, feel free. Um, but it could be it could be too new right now. I just heard about this story last night, and it seems to have worsened. Mm. There's death matchups, but yes, there's no like yes. at like Betty White versus Carol Burnett. And to be honest, I didn't know Carol Burnett was still alive. I didn't know. Betty, nah, I knew Betty White. Was yeah, you would know. Yeah. If Betty White died, it would be a fucking huge deal. If Carol Burnett died, it would be like, oh, fucking great. Sorry. Yeah, who wins in that? Uh, Betty White's <laughs> or RBG? Um, Betty White's if- uh, minus 260, so it seems like she's going first. But, you know, she, she also might be the goddamn Terminator. She's old, man. She's in her 90s right now. Um, and I know she stepped away from public life because of um, her age. And she was just like, bro, I'm not, nobody needs to see my, my shit like this. Um, um, she but, is 98. RBG dying would be peak 2020. Oh, dude, Charlie Sheen and Magic Johnson as a new matchup on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Didn't know that one was on here. Uh, it's the big one. Um, Neither. They're rich. They're both rich. Big one. This is, come on. Uh, Regis Philman or Bob Barker. That makes sense. Rosie O'Donnell or Roseanne Barr. I mean, Roseanne Barr is older, but they both have diabetes, right? They have to. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no way uh, those two women don't both have diabetes. Oh, of course, of course. Um, by the way, speaking of sports, dude, I watched this uh, the NASCAR qualifier last night with Bubba Wallace. Um, he was booed throughout the entire qualifier because uh, people are, are allowed in the stands there um, at yeah. NASCAR right now. And uh, when he crashed his car, they gave him a standing ovation. Um, so Bubba Wallace is, uh, if, you were, if you were wondering which side the public turned to after the, the noose incident, it is clearly not on his side after that. Um, he also got into it with another driver last weekend and told him to go fuck off. Yeah, like, man, so a bunch of drinker bros were talking about that shit, um, about how he's just like a petulant little child. So before I said anything about him publicly, because if you remember, I gave him the benefit of the doubt when that shit first came out. Like, we'll see mm-hmm. what happens. And even after it came out that it was not technically a noose and it had been there for a very long time, like, still, he was fed this information from NASCAR. But behind the scenes, several people who work in, like, directly for NASCAR have told me that he is a little bitch. Like, that whole incident where he fucking uh, smashed his fucking PlayStation remote or whatever the fuck and left the virtual race thing really rubbed a lot of people the wrong way in NASCAR. So uh, not, not necessarily... Uh, administratively but the drivers did not like him Mm -hmm. because of that um and then i feel like right now if he had come out and said hey you know what this seems like it wasn't directed at me so i'm going to refocus my energy on shit that actually matters or whatever the fuck like you still fight the fight dude just because you take a loss doesn't mean you stop fighting but if you get wiped the fuck out you can't keep doing the same shit you know what i mean like you're sending if you're sending troops up the middle and they're getting lit the fuck up and you keep doing it you're an asshole so he's all these dudes that came out and showed him support openly like that and made a big scene about it probably feel like dicks. They probably feel like jerk offs now because this guy's that's our representative of what we've done. 
he's a petulant little bitch and he's not good at racing. He fucking sucks. And now he's just out there fucking whining about anything that happens. He, he's got some issues. He's like a little child. He acts like a little child. Yeah, and it's only going to continue, obviously, when, when you start going to you know, all these tracks and people hate you in any sport. It's going to start to get to you after a while, man. Um, and uh, he's never won a race yet. I don't, I don't see how this is going to help his cause going forward. I wonder how long he ends up in NASCAR, to be honest with you. I don't know, man. I mean, there's, I don't know what, I, I don't know enough about NASCAR to say if, if it's normal that he's been here for several years and never won anything um, mm-hmm. or his average uh, finishing position or whatever the fuck. My average finishing position, by the way, is reverse cowgirl. Um, <laughs> Got him. Uh, <laughs> do we all know what reverse cowgirl is? If you don't, then you definitely don't listen to this show. I can tell you that. Um, I, by the way, <laughs> we were looking at office spaces here in Austin. Uh, this woman goes, so I, I listened to your show. Oh, and I was shit. like, oh, yeah? And I go, which one? She goes, well, I hadn't heard the show before, so I just started with number one. And I was like, oh, pegging explained. Yeah. Um, so have you ever put a strap on and fucked your husband? Um, and there was just crickets on mm. that one. Crickets. Didn't one of the one woman told you, uh, what did she say? Like that co-host here is he just says whatever comes to his mind, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, there was one building that we went into where there was mandatory where they put one of those temperature guns to your head. And yeah. You have to wear a mask. Temporal scanner. Um, yeah, yeah. So when we went upstairs in the elevator, she goes, um, you know that one co-host who just says whatever he wants all the time? Like it just blurts things out. And I go, yeah, yeah. She goes. I don't see him being real cool with this on a <laughs> basis. And I was like, no, no, I don't, I don't think he would be, but I'll ask him. I would do it um, if they were scanning like my butthole or something. The beauty of it is, is I called you right afterwards and I go, Hey man. So, you know, there's this one building that I like and blah, blah, blah. You've got to go in with a, you know, the, th- the thermal scan and all that stuff. You cut me off and you go, get fucked. Tell those people to get fucked. Yeah. And I was like, yep, that was the, exactly the answer that they were expecting. Yeah. So that is off the table. I would just like, I mean, if I, if we really had to do it, I obviously I would do it, but I would, I would make it fun for me <laughs> in any way I could. I would fucking put ice cubes on my forehead before I walk in. So my temperature is like 23 degrees Fahrenheit. They're like, Oh, you're yeah. dead. According to this, you're dead guy. Like, yeah. <laughs> just like walking with peanut butter sm- smeared on my forehead. Like, Oh, this is from earlier with this no explanation. A, yeah. A sandwich accident I had in the street. Or um, just bring really a fucking sorry. fresh rectal thermometer in every single day and hand it to them and be like, these are, this is how I'm going to do this. So yep. uh, I don't want anybody. I have autism, so you can't touch my face and stuff, but you can jam this up my b-hole. <laughs> <laughs> just going to warn you, though, it's probably going to be over 100. Uh, yeah. I had a little uh, something spicy for dinner last <laughs> night, so. That's going to be in the triple dig, my man. That doesn't mean I have COVID. It just means I was eating jalapenos. Yeah, the last night. couple of thermometers actually singed off inside of me. <laughs> <laughs> and they've never returned. No. no, I don't know where they are. I mean, I assume they're still floating around in there. Sure, butthole. It's yeah. just your asshole is, is, is like Chernobyl, dude. It just melts everything in its path. A radioactive butthole. That'd be something. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm starting to think Aaron Rodgers might be gay and he might have a radioactive butthole. My ex for decades, ever since decades, I guess it's been like 15 years, but ever since he came into the league, she said from the beginning, like, he's definitely gay. Come on. But then he starts dating all these women. Well, that's the thing is I've heard these rumors, right, for years. And uh, he was dating Olivia Munn for a long time. Now, I worked with her. Um, She is a fantastic person. And if, if you're going to marry someone in this world, she's like a uh, she's like a bro, dude. She's just cool as fuck, hilarious, um, hot, all that shit. Um, and she, she was dating gorgeous, a friend, yeah. a friend of ours at the time, and um, so you know nobody ever hit on her. But w- when I saw she was dating Aaron Rodgers, I was like, oh, if he doesn't marry her, I think he's definitely gay. Um, they break up. He starts dating Danica Patrick. Now you're starting to go. Not that she, Danica Patrick's not cute. She is. You're mm. starting to go a little dudeish now. Yeah. Like kind of like a little mannish. And mm. um, and then they broke up last night uh, after two years, and and that was it. So now I'm thinking, all right, he's he's definitely probably, the uh, the next one's gonna player. have at least a vestigial pole down there, right? Something left over, <laughs> a little nub or something, <laughs> <laughs> or at least a woman with a really big clit. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like it's going to be some kind of he's <laughs> he's in the stages right now. <laughs> <laughs> probably it's gonna look like a like a little uh boxer tail yeah you know, on, this, on, a, on a boxer just yeah. waggling yep. around like this all the time i wonder if we could create an app that's made specifically for dudes who are going or figuring out they're gay but they want to start with a little wiener so it helps like people with little dicks have trouble getting laid and these sure. dudes, these dudes need to ease into fucking being gay so like why not yeah i think it's a good idea like those cocktail wieners you see um like that size or the know? red hots Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I want it to be that red. So you either got to use food coloring or, uh, I don't know, just friction. I don't know. How do you make stuff red? Uh, food Easter color. egg dye. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Easter egg dye. Yeah, yeah. Food pause. Color. Pause Easter egg dye. Yeah. <laughs> what about pause dick dye? Have you seen the, uh, the testacuzzi? It's a testicle jacuzzi. Have you seen these? No. The, this exists now. Remember me explaining fucking like a year ago on the show? Yeah. How I wanted yeah, yeah. to have like a little bathtub for my testicles and I just fucking mm-hmm. pour Kill Cliff in there and squat down and just let my fucking dick and balls rest for a while. It yeah. exists now. It's a real product that you can buy. That's amazing, yeah. dude. Um, I'm suing wh- where does that? Where does that live in your house? Like where do you put that testacuzzi? Uh, I mean, for me, it's probably at the breakfast nook because that's when I'm going to want to do that. Sure, when, right, right when you wake up? Yeah, right when I wake up before I like shower and stuff, I want to have some coffee, eat some eggs. And let my fucking balls boil in this little water. I, I understand that. Um, I would probably go. I'm a night guy. Mm. Uh, I'd like to kick back with a little holy moly, the uh, putt putt game on ABC, mm. and then uh, kind of dip my balls in that. Yeah, but I think I would want uh, to be in a full jacuzzi at night. That's why I said morning. I'm just trying to spread uh, it out a little bit. You know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I don't want to fucking bust my. I don't. Does keeping your nuts warm have any kind of health benefit? I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. Um, but it, look, it's a comfort thing. Yeah. Uh, it feels nice when they're warm. Like, why aren't there ball socks? You know, a listener sent one in. And it was an elephant um, uh, type of deal with a trunk in it. And then there was kind of two tusks. No, but I don't want the trunk. I don't, I'm not, it's not about right. the dick, man. I just want, my, I want a sock for my testicles. Sure. Uh, I, I would say that they probably make those. It's got to exist. If it doesn't, we'll find some. Yeah, or like a, a little mask for COVID for your balls, so your balls don't get COVID. Well, I think you would put it over the uh, the eye of your dick hole right there, because ah. that's the exposed uh, uh, membranes, right? Yeah, yeah. If you yeah, were yeah, trying probably. to prevent the spread of whatever the fuck, I mean, I don't believe in that shit, anyways. Condoms, I mean, obviously. Yeah, of course, of course. You got to raw dog it, yeah. uh, just like Joey Chestnut. You got to raw dog those. Is that what he does? Things. Yeah, yeah, dude. He he goes clean dog in the in the mouth, and then he's got a bun up afterwards. So mm. I I get it, dude. I get it. Um, by the way, since we're, we're uh, flying to Los Angeles, um, they're combining all the airlines now because of all this bullshit and trying not to go bankrupt. So there's limited flights out there. You know what flight I got stuck on uh, for Sunday was Spirit Airlines. Oof. That was the only nonstop in from Austin. I I don't believe I've ever flown that. So oh, good luck. Prestigious carrier yeah because that's not gonna work out <laughs> i mean i feel like uh going on spirit airlines is like somebody walks into a room and says here take this and hand you a bunch of pills yeah it, it could be fine and it probably won't be no no it definitely won't everything is bright yellow and uh going through the site was is very much like a simon says uh trying to pick out your shit yep um and it's a, it's a real strange setup there. I'll be amped to report about it. But if we touch down in Los Angeles and RBG is dead, they're going to be in the streets, Dan. You know that, right? Yeah. And we'll be in the fucking heart of it all, the stink of L.A. during it. <clears throat> yeah, that'll be fun. I should bring my I, red Thanos hat with me, actually. That's a good point. I think we should wear robes. We should get some justice robes and march with everyone. Um, ooh, I mean, look, me wearing robes. <laughs> the way my skin tone and this whole situation, they're going to immediately be like, all right, this guy's in the clan. <laughs> like, no, it's, it's not, it's not like that. I'm in a church. No, choir. I need a justice robe, like a Supreme court justice robe. I mean, they look basically robe. the same, right? No, they're all black, man. Uh, it is a, it is a distinct difference on that one, Dan. Uh, I don't think you can say that something is all black like that. It doesn't sound right. Yeah, yeah, it is. When you're describing clothing, 
You can you can still say all black. I don't clothing. think so. I don't think so. Would you say that it's all Puerto Rican clothing? No. <laughs> if it was, if it had a Puerto Rican flair to it, maybe I would. No. No, you can't, well, what you can't say that. What Puerto Rican flair? Uh, I have no idea. I've been there fucking, I've spent like two and a half or so months of my life there, I think, and I still don't know what people wear there. I think it's just <laughs> like here, like, or at any other Latin area, right? It's the same style yeah, of clothing. It's, it's Je- like Miami, right? Like jeans and fucking t-shirts and shit. That's what I usually see yeah. down there. One would imagine. Uh, Unless the, the older people wear uh, sometimes jeans or fucking chinos or something, but they wear those uh, like Cuban. I, I don't think it's Cuban, actually, but that collared shirt that a lot of Latinos wear. You know what I'm talking about? Like a short, yeah, yeah, yeah. short sleeve collared shirt because it's hot as fuck down there. Yeah. Like a lot of the older people uh, wear that shit, but I don't know what the younger people wear. Probably just whatever the fuck, right? I, who knows, man? So I, again, guessing. Here's what I've done: I've unmonolith. You think that all Puerto Ricans and their clothes look alike, and I just described how that's not true. So you're fucked. You're you're yeah, racist. C- congratulations, I, uh, I won. You, you did it. All all clothes matter, and I think that's what <laughs> uh, what I learned um, today. And that's that's uh, super important to me in my life going forward. Uh, and I appreciate you pointing that out and and really sticking it where uh, where it should be stuck. Uh, let's get to the drinking bro of the week, Dan. We're actually going to give it to uh, Alec, our producer today. Um, a- Alec, this might be your last show, I believe, right? Um, I can see you on camera. Um, yeah, because um, we're going to Los Angeles, and uh, you're going back to school. Um, are, are you guys back, or are they making you guys go online? It's undecided. It's undecided. So they have, like, I think the plan now is he said that they're going to have uh distance learning for a lot of it but the sets are going to be open as long as you observe social distancing guidelines and that shit Ooh, so they can still go in there and record stuff but that's going to be tough i mean i don't know i think they should just tie six foot strings to everybody and if your string is (laughs) if your string is not taught jail go to jail immediately jail that's it jail so you have to yell like 30 people like hey can you back up three feet because i got to take a shit (laughs) <laughs> or whatever you, know? <laughs> you don't have to be shitting i'm just saying <laughs> uh, obviously that's an obviously. example where one would need others to move out of the way hopefully you would be so courteous as to ask people to take a step aside when you're going to start dropping dropping turds yeah hey, i don't yeah. know what well, he said either way we we uh <laughs> we wish you the best and uh we thank you for all your hard work buddy um and uh good luck at school finish strong Get that degree. Be a be a big boy and make a difference out in the world. You know, quit being a piece of shit. Yeah, totally you're not, kidding. You're not gonna make a difference. Totally kidding. <laughs> That's what you think, though. You know, you go to college, and you're like, man, I'm gonna go out and change the world, and then uh, all you're doing is protecting your bee hole the rest of your life because everybody's trying to fuck you. I was just doing drugs in college, to be honest. Uh, a lot of people were. So um, it's not like you know. that much different than now. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> so what you're saying is if Alec plays his cards right, he can grow up to be just like Dan. Uh that might be a stretch. Yeah, I don't think he would I don't think he'd <laughs> he like said that. Never. He's a big Joey Diaz fan. Uh, but I don't think he's I don't think he sees him as a role model. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you being like Joey Diaz when you're older, Dan. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of like that now. I'm just not as loud. No, but I'm, look, if we give you, what is he, what's Joey Diaz? He's got to be in his fifties, right? Yeah. Yeah. 56, 56, you said. Yeah. I, I think, I think you and, you know, 18 years or whatever it is for you, like you could get there, dude. Maybe <clears throat> God willing. <laughs> See what happens. God willing, uh, we will be live from Los Angeles next week. Giorgio um, has some technology. We're going to try to to work out and see if we can go live from our Airbnb. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll have some fun guests for you. Uh, Alec, we appreciate your hard work, brother. Uh, good luck at school. We love you. For D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.